Before we get into today's edition of Just the Truth, Mike Lindell sent me a note yesterday. He has a special for the six-piece towel set, 25 bucks when you use promo code JOEY. Just go to MyPillow.com, use promo code JOEY. You'll get the $25 offer on the six-piece towel set, and I promise you, these will be the most comfortable, the most absorbent towels that you own. MyPillow.com, use promo code JOEY, get the six-piece towel set for just $25. Thanks for joining me in the PhD Weight Loss and Nutrition Studio to lose weight for the last time visit myphdweightloss.com. President Trump holds an 18-point lead over President Biden in Iowa, according to a new poll in a one-time crucial general election battleground state that shifted to the right over the past decade. We'll talk about that. The White House went on the offensive against the New York Post yesterday for calling out President Biden's frailty in a series of recent videos only to make false statements of their own in the process. This is one of those situations to where Corinne Jean-Pierre just basically stood there and lied. And get this, speaking of the debate, MSNBC host Alex Wagner is worried that President Biden will have to overcome a what she called a, quote, structural disadvantage in the upcoming debate with Donald Trump because he's being held to a much higher standard than Donald Trump. What is this lady smoking? Uh, remember when New York required masks? They were one of the first to have mask mandates during COVID. Well, now New York Mayor Eric Adams says he's in favor of reinstated a mask ban in the Big Apple. We'll tell you all the details on that. Tupperware brands. How many of you have always, uh, maybe your parents or maybe you, purchased Tupperware? I know my mom has, has used Tupperware products forever uh as a as a kid i can remember uh a lady down the street from us sold tupperware well tupperware is closing its last remaining manufacturing plant in the u.s and moving operations to mexico costing more than 100 u.s workers their jobs yes joe biden bidenomics is working i told you we'd be back and you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free it's Joey Hudson. I wanted to name it the Joey Hudson Bill, but, you know, they don't allow you to name put names on bills. <laughs> but I wanted to call it the Joey Hudson Bill because I know, I know that one's been near and dear to you for a number of years. That's how it's done. Let your voice be heard. And the truth shall set you free. Here's Joey Hudson. Some good news for the Trump team. Uh, President Trump holds an 18-point lead over Joe Biden in Iowa according to this latest poll in a one-time, uh, what was considered a, a crucial general election battleground state. Uh, Trump, the GOP presidential nominee well, in just a few weeks, stands at 50%, with Joe Biden's 32% among likely voters in the Des Moines Register Mediacom Iowa poll, which was released yesterday. Democrat-turned-independent presidential candidate Robert F. Kennedy Jr., who says he's now qualified to make Iowa's ballot gets 9% of the support. The Libertarian Party candidate Chase Oliver coming in at 3% with the remaining 3% backing other candidates, according to the survey. Iowa was a one-time swing state, which former President Barack Obama carried in 2008 and again in 2012. But Trump won the uh, state by nine points when he upset Hillary Clinton in 2016 in his uh, White House victory that year and by eight points over Biden four years ago in the disastrous 2020 election. Trump's 18-point lead over Biden is up from a 15-point margin the former president held over his Democrat successor uh, in previous Des Moines Register uh, Iowa polls, which was uh, the last one was conducted back in February uh, as the presidential uh, the, the caucuses were taking place. The poll was conducted June 9th through the 14th, entirely after Trump was found guilty of all 34 felony counts as well. So you can't say that, well, they didn't know about the, the convictions in New York. Yes, they did. Iowans do know about the convictions, and they still support Donald Trump in a big way. The president's approval rating in the same poll at 28%. Joe Biden has a 28% approval rating among Iowans, with two-thirds disapproving of Joe Biden and what he's doing in the White House, and obviously do not want him to return to the White House. 
His uh, Biden's favorable, favorable ratings was also underwater at 33% favorable and 66% unfavorable. I think that's uh, easy to, to predict that Joe Biden's not going to do very well in Iowa this year. Uh, Trump, by comparison, held a 51 to 47% favorable, unfavorable rating in the survey. The poll questioned 632 likely Iowa voters in an overall sampling era of plus or minus 3.5%. Uh, (laughs) speaking of Joe Biden and of course the first presidential debate coming up next Thursday, again, hope you'll plan to, uh, if you're in, live in the Carolinas, hope you'll plan to join us for our fourth district Republican club and young Greenville, uh, presidential debate watch party in, uh, at Willie taco in Greenville, uh, MSNBC host, Alex Wagner is a little concerned for president Biden going into this debate. She says that Biden has to overcome a structural disadvantage in the upcoming debate because he's being held to a much higher standard. It already feels like, you know, the first presidential debate is set for June 27th. It already feels like the bar that is set for Biden to clear is so much more substantially, is so much substantially higher than the one Trump has to clear, which is literally, is he alive? Is he standing? Are the words coming out of his mouth? Setting aside what the words actually are. And I just, I wonder if there's any way for Biden to overcome what seems like a structural disadvantage on, you know, in the weeks leading up to what's going to be a pretty important inflection point in this campaign. Wow. Uh, And she believes that too. She was discussing a recent column by her guest, the New Yorker, Susan Glasser, arguing that Trump's incoherent rambles at his rallies were evidence of his age-related decline that made him unfit for office. Now, what what they don't talk about, yeah, they, they may they may claim that Donald Trump rambles a bit because he stands there for an hour and 20 minutes like he did in Detroit on Saturday without really any notes and just speaks to the people. Joe Biden could not stand somewhere and give an hour and 20-minute speech if his life depended on it. Wagner and Glasser said that Trump's rambling stories do not get the same kind of media attention as reports critical of Biden's age and mental fitness. The MSNBC host balked at a statement Trump campaign advisor Jason Miller gave to the New York Times, claiming Trump was prepared for the debates because he takes on numerous tough interviews every single week and delivers lengthy rally speeches while standing, demonstrating elite stamina. Wagner said it's almost like what he says is beside the point. The fact he's up there standing, still talking is enough. The Trump team thinks to placate anyone or dissuade them from thinking he's somewhat adult, and thus far, they seem to be right. She said the fact of the matter is there's way more scrutiny on President Biden than there is of President Trump. Wagner wondered if Biden would overcome this structural at disadvantage. What is a structural disadvantage, by the way? Glasser said that Biden faced a tougher task in Trump because the former president catered his message to his followers who don't hold him accountable to the same standards as other public officials in this country. Wow. And again, she believes this. She, she really believes this. She is convinced that Joe Biden is not held or that, or that Donald Trump uh, is held to a lesser standard than Joe Biden. I wonder what, how she explains some of the videos that we, you and I have seen. I mean, videos don't lie. The video of Barack Obama in Los Angeles this past weekend having to gently take Joe Biden's hand and direct him off stage after Biden had stood there and just stared into the, into, to the audience, just, and just like he did last week in, uh, in Italy, where another world leader had to, had to literally go after him he was wandering off walking away had to go off and bring him back to be in the group photo shot shoot that's our president remember when new york required masks they were one of the first to have mask mandates during covid now mayor eric adams and governor kathy hochel believe that they should reinstate a ban on masks in new york because crime has gotten so excessive there that and much more coming up Hope you'll join the conversation today, 864-477-JOEY, 864-477-5639. Send your comments to the Furman Ford text line. You can leave a quick voice message, and your emails are always welcome, joey at joeyhudson.com. Soon going to be four years ago that I started my journey with Ph.D. weight loss and nutrition. I lost 30 pounds pretty quickly, I might add, and I've been able to maintain that for almost four years now. It'll be four years coming up in July. If this is the year that you have 
decided that you're going to get healthy, that you're going to lose that weight, that visceral fat that's so uh, damaging around your your waist, then now's the time to start. Let me encourage you to make that call today. 864-252-4925. Set up your initial consultation with PhD Weight Loss and Nutritious. Boy, am I glad that I met Dr. Ashley Lucas uh, four years ago and that she got me on the right path to getting healthy. You're going to be able to do things that you may have thought you'd never be able to do again. Uh, play with the kids, the grandkids, be able to, to hike and, and walk and uh, maybe play a full 18 round, uh, hole of golf and be able to do it and not get so winded because when you take that excess weight off, you're just going to feel better. You're going to be able to focus. You're going to, be able to sleep better. Your overall health is just going to be improved. 864-252-4925. Call, set up your initial consultation. Find them online at myphdweightloss.com. PhD Weight Loss and Nutrition, the official partner of the Clemson Tigers. You remember when New York required masks? They were one of the first to have mask mandates during COVID. I mean, th- this was just part of the overall shutdown of the city. New York City, one of the large cities who literally destroyed their local economy because of the closures during the pandemic. Their their restaurants and businesses in New York that were open prior to COVID that Peg and I used to go to quite often. Uh, Prior to COVID, I was in New York about once a month. Uh, Peg, before she retired uh, as well, was there once, twice a month too because she, she had a sales team in New York. We loved visiting new york now i would never want to live there i always love getting back home to my little place in Greer, but i love to visit and still do but new york was devastated by covid there there are areas in new york still and it's been how many years now four years three to three to four years and there were family restaurants in our little neighborhood in new york just off of uh of Fifth Avenue near Rockefeller Center who did not survive because of the mass mandates, because of the, uh, you, you know, you had to have your, your jab pass. <laughs> you had, you had to be, show proof that you had been vaccinated to, to literally do anything in New York. But again, You could not, even if you had been vaccinated in New York, you were required to always have a mask on. They were obsessive with wearing masks. So that's the irony of this latest effort on New York because crime has gotten so bad. And these hoodlums have learned that they can wear masks. And it's hard for for the officials to find them, to, to identify them. So New York City Mayor Eric Adams, in a news conference yesterday, said that he's in favor of reinstating a mask ban in the Big Apple, particularly in subways, protests, and other non-health-related areas in order to curb the crime. That that is just going nuts. Adding that cowards cover their faces. (laughs) Now, this coming from the man who would have you arrested a few years ago if you did not wear a mask. You were a coward if you didn't wear a mask. Now you are a coward if you do wear a mask. Now, look, I I get it, and, and I, I don't think people should be allowed to wear a mask in these public areas anyway. But it's just the irony of, of Mayor Adams and Governor Hochul, who famously instigated statewide mask mandates. Now they want to ban the wearing of masks in public places. Uh, Mayor Adams met with reporters yesterday afternoon when he was asked about the possibility of implementing a mask ban. Last week, Governor Hochul said she was considering bringing back a ban on masks in, uh, in, in the whole state, statewide of New York, again to reduce crime. Her proposal was was rejected by some on social media who are still fearful of the COVID-19 virus. During an interview with CNN anchor Laura Coates last week, Hochul was asked about potential measures she may take to reduce 
the 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 rising crime rate in new york city which has just gotten totally out of hand including reinstating a previous mass ban jewish leaders have said that the mask have made violent offenders less afraid to commit anti-semitic hate crimes when asked about hokel's proposal mayor adams told uh, the reporters it was all about proper implementation The mayor said, I'm a strong supporter of the decision of stopping masks on our subway system, masks in protests, and masks in other areas where it's not health-related, he said. The mayor explained that the public will likely see the despicable hate behavior being seen across the city begin to dissipate with the implementation of a ban on wearing masks. He said, masks are not new, and covering your face while you do terrible things is not new. There were these guys that used to ride around the hood in the deep south, so cowards covered their faces. Now, he he had to throw that barb at at the south, talking about the Ku Klux Klan, uh, of course. He told those who protest if they believe in something, they should stand up and show their face while believing and talking about it. But to those standing on the New York City trains and telling people to raise their hands if they're Zionists and telling them to get off the train, they should show their faces, the mayor said. Uh, he, he went on to say of, of Governor Hochul's proposal, I believe the governor is in the right place and I strongly support it. I hope we get it done. The quicker we do it, I think it stops a lot of this crime. They don't know what to do, do they? L- let me tell you what I think they're going to find when they unmask these bandits. I think they're probably going to find a lot of illegal aliens there as well. There's going to be a lot of illegal alien faces behind those masks who are create who are committing a lot of the crime in new york city so mr mayor yes you may want to do away uh you may may want to ban the mask but you also may want to consider cleaning your city up and getting rid of the illegals and not embracing them with open arms that might solve some of your crime problem too but 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 back to the mask because again i just think the irony here uh I did a quick Google search when I saw this, Uh, and all I searched was uh, Governor Hochul and mask. And the first thing that popped up was September 2021, when the headline was, Governor Hochul announced a series of universal mask requirements to protect New Yorkers amid rise of Delta variant. The statement went on to go, Uh, to to read governor kathy hochel today announced a series of universal mask requirements designed to protect new yorkers against the highly contagious delta variant and the recent surge in covid19 infections statewide the requirement applies to new york state office of children and family services licensed and registered child care centers home-based group family and family child care centers after school child care programs and enrolled legally exempt group programs during operational hours implementing the mass regulation and child care programs will provide consistency between child care program children school children many of whom who often share the same buildings new mask requirements uh, will also apply to congregate programs and facilities licensed and it goes on to list a whole whole list of uh, of different ones like the office of addiction services the office of mental health i mean basically every state agency was required to again implement uh, implement mass mandates but now they want to ban them that's how quickly things can change hope you'll join the conversation today 864-477-JOEY 864-477-5639 send your comments to the firm and forward text line you can leave a quick voice message and your emails are always welcome joey at joeyhudson.com whether you're replacing a broken appliance or maybe you're just upgrading you're totally remodeling the kitchen when it's time to get those new appliances, when you're ready for them, you don't want to have to wait weeks or even months to get started using them, right? Well, that's not the case when you shop with my friends at Discounted Appliance Warehouse. With over 11,000 square feet and 1,500 appliances at any, any given time, you can buy today and use today quite often. I'm talking about shopping with my friends at Discounted Appliance Warehouse in Pickens. It's worth the short drive over to Pickens. Jeff, Johnny, Kyle, the whole team over there, they'll take good care of you. They have an award-winning service department, expert installation, extended warranties, and a discounted appliance warehouse. They treat you like family. You're more than just a credit card swipe to all the team over there. Discounted Appliance Warehouse, a proud 
to offer Speed Queen, the only washer and dryers with manufacturer's warranties that cover parts and labor. You owe it to yourself if you're looking for a new appliance to head over to Pickens to Discounted Appliance Warehouse online at DAWPickens.com, DAWPickens.com. On our guest line, Chairman of the South Carolina Republican Party, Drew McKissick. Good morning, sir. How are you? Man, I'm doing well. How are you? I am wonderful as well, ready to to start another week. Uh, let's just jump right in with the Republican primaries last week. Mm-hmm. Of course, it was a busy day, as you and I had talked about, a record number of names on the ballot. But the turnout, uh, it appears to be rather low. Were you a bit surprised? Did you expect a higher turnout than what we saw? No, uh, you know, we had no state Senate, I mean, uh, U.S. Senate race or no governor's race, no statewide races on the ballot to, you know, draw turnout everywhere. So there were actually some areas in the state that had no primaries going on. You know, mm-hmm. so Georgetown County, Marion County, a handful of others had, you know, no primaries at all. Uh, so, it's, you know, scattered around the state. Of course, you know, very, very heavy turnout in the upstate, as you would expect. Most of the competitive races were up that way. You know, yes. Congressional primaries going on, state Senate primaries, state House primaries, drawing a lot of turnout. Now, overall, uh, we doubled Democrat turnout on early voting, uh, 80,000 to 40,000. So 120,000 total, which was up. From two years earlier, it was only a total of 100,000 people voted early the last time. So I think maybe this is indicative of more people becoming comfortable and confident in the early voting process. I hope that's true. Um, But in terms of the total turnout, I believe we were around just under 340,000 for Republicans statewide. And that's versus about 380 uh, plus two years ago when we had the governor's primary going on. So it wasn't that much less, especially considering that, you know, we didn't have any statewide races going on, but 70% of every individual, 70% of all the people rather who did cast a primary ballot, cast a Republican ballot in the primary. Well, that's a good number. I like that, Sure. but, but I guess I've, I've seen some reporting and maybe I should have dug a little deeper uh, that f- from from some of the local media that was they were citing the fact that uh, and I forget the exact numbers like fifteen percent in Greenville County and thirteen percent in Spartanburg County thirteen percent sort of they gave as an average statewide uh, and, and they were reporting that as being just a low turnout. Well, I mean that's comparatively speaking to uh, one two years ago we had statewide races. As I just pointed out, you know, it's about 40,000 yeah. less on our side than what we had two years ago. Uh, but again, they're looking at it in terms of total voter, like all the registered voters in South Carolina. Right. All registered voters don't participate in primaries. Right. Uh, that's just a fact. I mean, you know, you're a former county chairman, you know, yeah. uh, and you've got a solid core within the party that knows they're going out to do their job to choose our nominees to represent us in the fall. Uh, you know, but. Uh, you know, I would say at the end of the day, when you're comparing apples to apples here, which is Republicans and Democrats, in terms of uh, our ability to attract folks from, you know, off the bench, as it were, to come participate and help, you know, choose our nominees, uh, I'll take 70 to 30 uh, any day of the week and twice on Sunday. Yeah. All right. <laughs> well, I feel I feel better already. See, see, Mr. Chairman, you've encouraged me here. Uh, <laughs> on our... Well, yes, I mean, line. That, that, that speaks that, uh-huh. that, that speaks to support for our party and our candidates, and that's my point. It, yes, okay. On our guest line, Drew McKissick, chairman of the South Carolina Republican Party. Well, I'll tell you where there was a lot of enthusiasm and, and a lot of uh, participation over the weekend. I made it up to Detroit to the People's Convention, and I got to tell you, I don't know that I've been in a, a convention center with more enthusiastic people than I saw on Saturday as people showed up to see President Donald Trump. Sure. And, and, you know, that's as what we've seen throughout this entire, you know, uh, nomination process for well over a year now, uh, enthusiasm among Republicans for President Trump to come back out uh, to run again, to take back the White House, uh, enthusiasm to see that happen, enthusiasm to see uh, Joe Biden go back into retirement. Well, it kind of seems like he's in retirement right now, but uh, <laughs> to, to, to leave the scene anyway. A lot of enthusiasm about that, and obviously the things that we would like to see done and some of the things we would like to see stop being done. Uh, And winning the White House is the way to make that happen. Yeah. 
Yeah. You know, the thing that, it, that really encouraged me, uh, o- over the weekend and, and seeing that, uh, of course, this was a turning point action event that Charlie Kirk had put together. And most of his events are, are really is the younger people. And, and that's good to see two younger sure. people getting involved. But, sure. but this event in particular, uh, all ages were invited. And, and that's what you saw. You had, you saw a good cross section of older people like me. Uh, and then, then the, the younger people involved. And I, I tell you, I was just encouraged to see that. Uh, I mean, estimated 10,000 or so, uh, over the weekend and mm-hmm. look, <laughs> so, so you, what a contrast you have Joe Biden in Los Angeles at a, uh, at a fundraiser and had to be led off the stage by Barack Obama. And you had Donald Trump speaking for almost an hour and a half. Sure. <laughs> Which is par for the course with President Trump, by the way. Yes. Uh, you know, he'll easily get up in front of a podium with no notes and go for well over an hour, no doubt about it. Uh, you know, Joe Biden couldn't pull that off if he had to. Uh, and, and look, I mean, we're in a position right now where, you know, it, it, it's an unfortunate thing. And we've kind of, we've talked about this before, you know, in a way it's almost kind of like uh, elder abuse, I yes. would say. You know, these people who are pushing him to continue and to run, when clearly he's not up to the challenge. And you would think his family would intervene at some point. We've all been in that situation where at some point somebody has to take car keys away from grandma or granddad. I, I, we've had to do that in my family on a yes. couple of occasions. Yes. Uh, and here we're not talking about the car keys. We're talking about the country. Uh, we're, we're, we're talking about the nuclear button. <laughs> correct. <laughs> yes. Correct. Uh, and it's it's very unfortunate uh, for them, him, his family, but more importantly for the country. Yep. Well, when you when you see that, when you when you see someone being literally let off the stage, and and you know I've watched that video multiple times, and this has happened mm-hmm. h- how many times in the past few weeks? I mean, uh, at, at the G7 summit the other day, sure. when you had another leader of another country having to show show our uh, president right. where he needed to be for the photo op. That, that's just, it, it's embarrassing. But as you said, someone needs to step in and intervene. I mean, there, there are laws against this type of thing. Correct. I mean, if this were not a president of the United States in a political campaign, uh, it would be a very different situation. Uh, but, but again, I mean, and you gotta, you have to think, obviously it's not good for even him mentally and physically and personally to have to endure the stress of the job being in the situation that he's in. But again, they continue to push him. And for one simple reason, it's about staying in power. And that's, that, that's what we know when it comes to the Democrat party, when it comes to so-called progressives, they'll do anything and everything they can to stay in power. Uh, and that's what we're seeing here. Yep. Quite frankly. Yep. Well, it just reminds us of the work we have to do between now and November. Uh, that's right. quickly, Mr. Chairman, Drew McKissick, uh, tell, tell us how to get involved. If someone is saying, Hey, you know, I, I need to be involved in this. Uh, Tell us what you're going to need going into November. Sure. A lot of different things that you can do. Uh, and I would encourage you, if you haven't yet, go to scgop.com, scgop.com. You can sign up right there on our homepage to get on our newsletter list. A lot of different opportunities to sign up for different things going forward. If you know you want to volunteer today, go to scgop.com slash volunteer. Uh, poll watcher training that we'll be doing, uh, also recruiting activists to help uh, make calls, turn out the vote, and so forth. There's a whole buffet table of things that you can do. All that we ask is that you do something. Choose something today that you can do, that you like doing, to help turn out the vote, help protect the vote, and help make sure that we elect good conservative Republicans to office so we can change policy. Yep. Drew McKissick, chairman of the South Carolina Republican Party. Again, that's scgop.com. And by the way, they take donations as well. So <laughs> we do. <laughs> well, it takes money to run elections. So um, always, right. always That's a right. pleasure. We'll check in again with you next week. Yes, sir. Have a great one now. Thank you, you too. Thank you, sir. Hope you'll join the conversation today. 864-477-JOEY, 864-477-5639. Send your comments to the Furman Ford text line. You can leave a quick voice message, and your emails are always welcome. Joey at joeyhudson.com. Speaking of the Furman Ford text line, you know, it's never been more important to support locally run businesses owned by people who actually live here in the upstate. 
Let me take a minute to talk with you about our friends at Furman Ford. If you're looking for a new vehicle, maybe a great pre-owned vehicle, one you can you could trust, or maybe you're looking to order that special vehicle. Uh, either way, if you want a new one, a brand new one, or a pre-owned that you can trust, the, the folks at Furman Ford, they're there to help you. Their name is on the sign because their name is on the line because every single tra- transaction is important to them. Jim Furman, Matthew Furman. They do business the right way. When you uh, stop by, when you give them a call, or maybe when you just uh, send them a quick email, you're always going to have access to a member of the Furman Ford family. And by the way, they also offer great service, and you're not going to have to wait weeks and weeks to get it done. And you do not have had to purchase your vehicle at Furman Ford. It doesn't even have to be a Ford. They, they service all makes and models. Visit my friends at Furman Ford online at FurmanFord.com, FurmanFord.com. As we prepare for n- next week's debate, the White House went on offensive against the New York Post yesterday for calling out President Biden's frailty in a series of recent videos, only to have Corinne Jean-Pierre to make false statements of her own in the process. Press Secretary KJP accused the New York Post of spreading misinformation about videos of the 81-year-old president at recent events with G7 world leaders and former President Barack Obama. The events in question uh, included a Thursday of last week video of Joe Biden being corralled by Italian Prime Minister George, uh, Georgia Milani after a skydiving, de- uh, skydiving demonstration of former President Barack Obama escorting his former vice president off the stage at a glitzy Hollywood fundraiser this past Saturday night. Did you see these videos in, in, in the Italy video? Biden was just like a child. They had this skydiving um, demonstration and all the other world leaders are standing there together as a group for the photo op. Joe Biden, really like a child, he's kind of looking off in the other direction and starts walking towards something. You can't see what he's walking towards, but he just walks away. When the Italian prime minister gently gets his arm and pulls him back over to the group so that he remains in the photo. Same thing happened over the weekend when they raised, what was it? 25, $30 million for the, uh, for the Democrats, Barack Obama, Joe Biden, had had this glitzy Hollywood uh, production. And after it was over, as they were walking off of the stage, Biden stops and he's just standing at the stage, staring into the audience, almost like he's looking into the lights. When Obama turns and just tries to uh, nonchalantly take his arm and pulls him off of the stage. Jean-Pierre called the clips cheap fakes, meaning to claim that they were altered by humans through techniques such as zooming in and leaving out context, but also incorrectly called them deep fakes, referring to AI-created footage with altered subjects and audio. It doesn't appear to me that anything has been altered, and it certainly is not AI-created. Here's the uh, here's Jean-Pierre responding. There, there, there seems to be a, a sort of rash of videos that have been edited to make the president appear especially frail or mentally confused. Um, I, I'm wondering if the, the White House is especially worried about the fact that this, this appears to be a, a, a pattern that we're seeing more of. Yeah, we, and I think you all have called this the cheap fakes video, and that's exactly what they are. They are cheap fakes video. Uh, they are done in bad faith. Uh, and, uh, and some of your news organization uh, have, uh, have been very clear, have stressed that these right-wing, uh, the right-wing critics of the president have a credibility problem uh, because of the fact checkers have repeatedly caught them pushing misinformation, disinformation. Uh, and so we see this, and this is something coming from, from your your part of the world, calling them cheap fakes and misinformation. Uh, and uh, I'll quote the Washington Post, where they wrote uh, they wrote about this, and they said how Republicans use misleading videos to attack Biden in a 24-hour period. And to their credit, we have a conservative Washington examiner uh, did call them out as well, calling out the New York Post. Uh, ironically, several, several recent cheap fakes actually attacked the president for thanking troops 
for thanking troops. That is what they're attacking the president for. Both in Normandy, this happened, and again in Italy. And uh, I think that it tells you everything that we need to know about how, um, how desperate, how desperate Republicans are here. She's lost her mind, hasn't she? Jean-Pierre then applauded the Washington Examiner for ostensibly supporting her claims, although the publication merely quoted British Prime Minister uh, trying to explain Biden's actions. Not that he didn't do it, but just trying to explain what, what had taken place. It, you, and you understand the Washington Examiner is a conservative publication. The article cited by the press secretary included quotes from the U.K. leader acknowledging the president had not gone where he was supposed to go when he had been pulled back to the group of his fellow leaders by the prime minister of Italy. The prime minister told reporters he just went over to kind of talk to all of them individually and Georgia was saying, don't worry, they're all coming to us. We were meant to line up so they could come and then shake all of our hands. To their credit, we have the conservative Washington Examiner did call them out as well, calling out the New York Post, Jean-Pierre said yesterday. That's not what the that's not what the Washington Examiner was doing. That's not what they did at all. She said it tells you everything you need to know about how desperate Republicans are here. Following this briefing, Jean-Pierre admitted to the New York Post that she didn't mean to use the term deep fakes. They are fakes, cheap fakes, she said, in reference to her incorrect use of the term. Deputy Press Secretary Andrew Bates, who led the White House's charge against the Post, his coverage of the videos, tweeted praise of Jean-Pierre, writing on X that she hit a nerve when she quoted the nonpartisan reporters who called out the right's desperate smear videos for what they are, cheap fakes. Why are they calling them cheap fakes when they haven't been altered? No one has has proven that they've been altered. And look, they're happening weekly. I mean, did you see the one with Barack Obama on on Saturday night in Los Angeles? There's no way that that video was altered. And the the one in uh, in Italy wasn't altered either. Again, the Washington uh, Examiner wasn't saying wasn't agreeing that that this was a a fake video or that the uh, nor was the uk prime minister i think the prime minister was just kind of being nice and trying to explain well here's kind of here's probably what happened wow on the text line we'll try to get a few text messages in tony says joey have you noticed lately that every time trump talks about what he's going to do when he becomes president again the biden campaign is now adapting to what he's saying I'm wondering how long it'll be before Biden campaign will start saying the same thing Trump is saying about no tax on tips. Don't give him any ideas there, Tony. Susan writes, I don't know why they're making such a big deal about Trump's and Biden's microphones being muted when it isn't there to uh, when it isn't their turn to speak. Oh, during next Thursday's debate. Has everyone but me forgotten that their microphones were also muted during their last debate in 2020? Faye writes, morning, Joey. Hearing more about Sherry Biggs makes me think that she should drop out of the race. Our district might be in a real bind if folks don't get this updated info about her. And now there are those suggesting Hillary run instead of Biden. Too many women are blind to her devil or her evil deeds. November is too far off. Folks, we have to get out to vote in higher numbers and in the primary. Wake up. We have our country to take back. There will not be a redo. Um, I'm not quite sure what all you're referencing there as far as the third congressional district race. But, hey, you do do need to pay attention. Read everything you can. Listen to them as they're interviewed on the radio and watch uh, watch the local debates. That's it for today's edition of Just the Truth. Thanks for joining me in the Ph.D. Weight Loss and Nutrition Studio to lose weight for the last time visit myphdweightloss.com. If you haven't joined our mailing list yet, visit my website, joeyhudson.com. Just click on the Connect with Joey button so that you can receive our emails and the most up-to-date news. Also, find me on YouTube. Be sure and like, subscribe, uh, follow me on my YouTube channel. Just search for Joey Hudson. Appreciate you spending a few minutes of your day with me. Be sure and forward this edition of Just the Truth to some friends. Just click on the Share button. Send it to a few of your contacts because... If we're going to build our community and we're going to win in the June primaries, and if we're going to win in November especially, 
we got to build an army of conservatives. The way we beat Joe Biden is through educating people and no better way than encouraging them to listen to just the truth. Hey, keep those comments coming via the Furman Ford text line, 864-477-JOEY, 864-477-5639. Your emails always welcome as well. Joey at joeyhudson.com. Don't forget to take advantage of the MyPillow special, $25 for the My Towels 6 piece. 